Every year there are different events in the night sky. 2022 is no different. Let's go over some things that will happen each month this coming year. This list is gonna point out things happening around the solar system, but the monthly events such as the full moon are gonna be left out. So let's leave out the common stuff. But let's go ahead and get into January. We start out the month and the year with the Quadrantids meteor shower, which runs from the 1st to the 5th and peaks around the 3rd. It's good this year because it is around a new moon, so the skies will be nice and dark. Now, a downside to it is that they radiate from the constellation Boutes, and that means it rises just a little bit later at night, but there will be increased meteors all night long. Other than that, there isn't a whole lot happening in January. And moving into February, February is also a rather slow month. So on February 16th, Mercury is at its greatest western elongation, which means from our perspective, it is the furthest from the sun. And for you early risers out there, this happens in the morning. So just before sunrise, you can get a good look at Mercury. But keep an eye on the other planets because some cool stuff's coming up in March. Going into March, like I said, a couple cool things with the planets. So on the morning of March 12th, there will be a conjunction of Venus and Mars. If you want to take a picture of them both in the same frame, you'll need to use something around 135 millimeters lens. And joining those two planets on March 28th, Saturn and the Moon will get really close and create this cool little unique wide field shot. If you live somewhere where that'll be close to the horizon and you can include some landscape, it'll create a pretty cool picture. Other than that, March doesn't have a whole lot going on, so we'll go ahead into April and that's where we start getting back into some meteor showers. So starting on April 16th and going to the 25th is the Lyrids meteor shower. And this one will actually be pretty good because of the moon phase. It peaks on the 20th second and Lyra rises shortly after sunset and the moon rises shortly before sunrise so the time around the peak will actually be very good for darkness to see all of the meteors. And one more thing happening in April, on April 29th, Mercury will be at the greatest eastern elongation, which means after sunset, it'll be visible for quite a while. So if you're not an early riser and didn't check it out in February, now's your chance. Okay, moving into May, there is a big event happening this year, and that is a total lunar eclipse. Now this takes place on May 16th, and it will be visible for the eastern half of North America in all of South America. Western Europe and Africa will be able to see a partial eclipse and the western half of North America will also see a partial eclipse. So the great thing about this eclipse too is that totality starts at just about 11.30 p.m and ends just before one o'clock. So you have a ton of time to grab pictures of that darkened moon. And take advantage of this if you live in the areas where totality is visible because the next one is in 2025, so it'll be a couple years. And now we move into June, which is probably the most boring month of the year. There is only Mercury at the greatest Western elongation. So in the morning again for you early risers, but that's pretty much it. But before I continue, I do have a question for you. What event are you looking forward to capturing? Meteor showers, lunar eclipses, taking pictures of planets? Let me know down in the comments below. But moving into July, we have the Delta Aquarius, which starts on July 12th and peaks on the 28th, but it runs until August 23rd. So you have tons of time to grab this meteor shower. But other than that, there isn't much going on in July. So we'll go ahead into August. In August, on the 12th and the 13th, the Perseids peaks, but technically it actually started on July 17th. Now, now the Perseids is a popular summer show for the Northern Hemisphere, but the bummer about it this year is that full moon is on the same night as the peak, so you're only going to see the brightest meteors. So Perseids is kind of a wash this year. If you want to put a positive spin on it, all of you that do landscape photography, this could create a pretty unique opportunity where if you have your back to the moon and you're framed up at the sky, you could get a nice moonlit landscape with some meteors in it. But even though there's a full moon on the 12th, on the 14th, if we go back to the planets for a second, Saturn is at opposition. So the 14th is the time that you're gonna to wanna to take pictures of Saturn because it will be the closest to Earth for the year and the best time to take pictures. And on the 17th, if you've been missing Mercury every time, Mercury is at the greatest eastern elongation again, so it'll be in the evening sky again. September kind of slows down all the fun with meteors, but now is a good time to take a look at two gas giants. So if you're somebody who has a telescope with some crazy long focal length and you've been wanting to take a look at Neptune on September 16th, Neptune is at opposition and that's the best time to take an image of that. But if you're only somebody with say a Edge HD 11 or something along those lines, on September 27th, Jupiter 
reaches opposition, and it's the best time to take an image of that gas giant. So now that we had all the fun with the gas giants, we're going back to meteors with the Orionids, which starts on the 2nd and peaks around the 21st. However, the Orionids are not a great meteor shower, they're kind of average, so don't expect to see a crazy show like you would have seen if the Pleiades would have been completely visible when they were going. The nice thing about this meteor shower is with the peak being on the 21st, new moon is on the 25th, so around peak time will be a great time because it'll be dark for most of the night. Alright, going into November, we are going back to our natural satellite, the moon, on November 8th for another total eclipse. Now, if you're anywhere from central North America over to eastern Russia, this is where you're going to see totality. Now because of the location of this one, I would expect the observatories in Hawaii are going to be putting out some pretty fantastic pictures of this eclipse. And if you don't live in those areas, I would even watch for some live streams from those areas because those telescopes should get a nice view of that. Now if you live outside of totality but kind of close enough to where you can get a partial, still it's worth checking out. Alright, and we are on to the last month of the year. So a little less than a year from the date this is being recorded, And of course, we always end the year with the Geminids meteor shower, which peaks on the 13th and 14th. But the bummer about the Geminids this time around is that the moon rises just before midnight, so you'll only get a couple hours of darkness in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere, maybe about an hour before the moon rises to take a look at the Geminids. And there it is for all of the solar system events for the year, when they will happen and whether or not they'll be kind of okay. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.